So if you were gonna design a spoon for mass production 3D printing, how would you do it? Let's talk about that. Now the spoon is a classic case of kind of, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Spoons are fine, and the only real innovation that has come from them is having disposable spoons, which are good or bad depending on how you look at them. But the spoon is a really interesting demonstration because this shape, this type of part, this curved type of part is really difficult to make with 3D printing. It can't really be supported, but it neither adheres straight down to the bed. So using it as a design exercise to understand how to design for mass production 3D printing, both to get the same amount of performance and as good of cost as you possibly can is a really good demo, which is why we're going through all of this. The first thing that you want to do when you're looking at the spoon is actually getting the handle. How do you get this length out of it? Well, it's not that hard to design it to be this long. Just go ahead and make a block this long. Some part of it is going to have to be flat. So if you're going to design it flat, make sure that it has a flat back edge. But you cannot make it a square. People have to be able to put their mouth over it and move on with life. So the front edge needs to be tapered. But now the question becomes, when you have this front tapered edge, how do you maintain the reliability of it? That has to be at least 35 degrees in order to be an overhang that is reliable and printable. Otherwise, you're gonna to start to get distortion on that. And that's really important to remember. And if you're printing it flat down on the bed, you need to make sure that the outer edges are rounded so that you have a good first level adhesion and then maybe choose the bed material that you wanna use. Do you want it to be matte? Do you want it to be glass? Do you want it to be a textured type bed? Now, those are all decisions that will impact the cost of the part when you're in production. Now, I went ahead and modeled up this general silhouette. This is a nice, flat, faceted design for a spoon, which looks okay and it's proportional and it's functionally sound. But then the question becomes, how do you actually get the bowl of the spoon? Or actually probably has a technical term. Comment down below if you know what that is. Since we're using printing, we have a lot of control of the geometry, so you can actually reinvent the spoon. In this case, what I did was I just went and shelled the whole part so that the spoon basically becomes more of kind of a scoop, which means that you can get a lot more into it a lot more reliably. The issue with this is when you're eating, when you're scooping something up out of a bowl, is that it can slide back up the handle of the spoon which again, might not be a bad thing, but that's not really what we're going for. We're making a spoon here. So if you're designing just a traditional spoon, just go ahead and model in the traditional bowl inside of there. And I did this by just rotating through a cylinder. And this is great. It's still a little bit big. Maybe you might cut it down or truncate it a little bit, but this is a good place to start. And now you have a spoon that looks fine, looks original, can differentiate you from any other competition if you're trying to make a very high quality set of spoons, but it's not that expensive to manufacture. The issue with this is though, if you have the tapered spoon, if you maintain all of that design language throughout the entire spoon, then you end up with this uh, stair stepping because the angle is so shallow that each new layer moving up moves way in. So you get a pattern that you don't really like. And the only way to get rid of this is to print it vertically. It's still sound, and since a spoon isn't under a lot of stress, you don't have to worry about it breaking off at the handle. But now a new issue comes up. If you're printing the spoon vertically, you now have to hold it up reliably. You could put it on its nose, but again, you have a flat on the end of the nose, and you wanna be able to scoop stuff up and have a good curved surface against a curved surface when using something like a bowl. So we have to print it on the back of its handle. So in order to print something tall and thin like this, number one, you have to have the correct machine. Fortunately, at Slant3D, we have the correct machine. The bed doesn't move, so you can reliably print this. But in order to make sure it stays reliable, what we also did was apply what is effectively a support comb to the back of the part. This allows it to have a very wide base that is very easily removed to where we can just snap off that back support comb when it prints off. Now this can be printed vertically. It's also able to be printed more affordably because you can do a rack of these and then the machine is able to auto eject those parts itself. Whereas these ones that are down flat might be more expensive to produce because they stick to the bed more firmly. So ejection is a more difficult proposition. But this also just creates a better surface finish and better overall aesthetic to the part as a whole. So allowing to take a thin part and put it up vertically reduces the cost, improves the surface finish and gives you a better overall product. Printing gives you all kinds of new options about how to design that were never possible before, so now you actually can reinvent the spoon. If you want to get a hold of the files for this spoon, just to print one off for yourself if you're just feeling fun for it, you can find that over on Angled.io, and there's a link in the description down below. And if you'd like to learn how to design support fins for your own parts, check out this video. Check back here soon for more videos coming down the pipe. Make sure you like and subscribe, and have a great day, everybody.